In this video, I'm going to be doing a full mock test, trying to get the magical 50, which I've been failing to do for the last three videos and get a better, decent score of the has perception, which has really been poor from my point of view. It's always about improving, improving and improving. So in this video, I'm going to try and do that. So you know how I do it. 50 question mock test giving you hints, tips, tricks along the way, breaking it down into simple chunks. So let's waste no time. I'm going to be doing the 50 questions on the desktop app. How should a load be carried on your roof rack? Visible in your exterior mirror? No. Nope. Securely fastened with suitable strengths? Yes. Um, covered with plastic sheen? It could do, but that's not the way it should be carried. And load towards the rear of the vehicle. Ideally, you want to get the um, weight distributed across the four wheels, to be fair. You're going to tow a trailer that's wider than your car. What must you fit to your car before you start towing it? Exterior towing mirrors, as a possible. Parking sensors, no. Rear view camera, no. Projection markers, no. You're leaving a safe gap as you follow a large vehicle. What should you do if a car moves into this gap? Um, make it safer, drop further back. Um, sound your horn, no. Drop further back, yes. Flash your headlights, no. Start to overtake, no. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? To get a better view of the road. That's why you normally hold back with larger vehicles. Again, if you can't see their wing mirrors, they can't see you. To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake, no. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you? No, even though it's got safe in it. To get the best view of the road? Yes. To leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and roll back. Ferry test is always about safety, so rolling back is not going to be an option. You're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind it? Similar question, just worded differently. You keep out of the wind better no you'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily no you'll give a driver a chance to see you in their mirrors that's what we spoke about earlier if you can't see the wing mirrors they can't see you and um, you'll be able to corner more quickly what's the most likely to what's most likely to distract you while you're driving using the windscreen nope using a mobile phone yes because you're splitting your attention between the phone and um you driving especially if it's hands-free um, using the mirrors, no. Using the demisters, that's your heaters, demister, no. In order to supervise a, la a learner driver, you need to have held a full driver license for the same category of vehicle for at least three years. What other requirements must you meet? Got to be over 21, to be at least 21 years old, yes. To have a car with dual controls, no. To hold an advanced driving certificate, no. To be an improved driving instructor, no. What does third party insurance cover? Third party insurance covers the damage you cause to other people's property. Damage to other vehicles, yes. Injury to yourself, no. All damage and injury, no. That'd be um, fully calm and damage to your vehicle, no. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have headlights on dip beam. What else can you do to reduce the chance of being in a collision? Well, let me just read that again because it didn't go in. Um, you're following other vehicles in fog, right? So it's foggy. You have your headlights on dipped beam. What else can you do to reduce the chance of being in a collision? Right, okay. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front as possible. Keep up with the faster vehicles, no. Use main beam instead of dip headlights, that's a definitely no. Keep close to the vehicle in front. No, it's going to be keep a safe distance. Again, it's got safe in the answer there. So I'm pretty much sure that's going to be correct. How can you avoid wheel spin when you're driving on icy roads? Use the highest gear possible. The highest gear is weak. You don't want um, the most powerful gear, which is one and two, because it, was caused, it will cause wheel spin. So brake gently, repeatedly, no. Use the parking brake if the wheels start to slip, no. Never use handbrake and while the car's moving. Driving a low gear at all times. Low gears, power gears, so no. Drive at a slow speed and the highest gear possible. In other words, the weakest gear so you don't get wheel spin. 
You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop an emergency? Emergency for them is someone's pulled that in front of you or someone's run that in front of you. So slowly and gently, no, that means you're going for the brake slowly and squeezing it gently. So no, it's an emergency. Slow, slowly, but firmly. Firmly is correct, but again, you're going for the brake slowly. It's an emergency. Rapidly and firmly. Rapid for them is quick. So you want to go for the brakes quickly, yes, and firmly, yes. And rapidly, again, quick, but gently, no, because you want to stop the car as quickly as possible. So it's going to be this one. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? To help other road users know that what... Well, let's get that going again. To help other road users know what you intend to do. That's a possible. Your car's positioning says what you want to do. So if you take it up in good time, i.e. Um, left of centre, that also lets people know you're looking to turn right. To give a better view into the road that you're joining, no. To allow drivers to pass you on the right, but you're moving to the right, so that's no. And to allow other drivers to pull out in front of you, again, no. Why is it dangerous to travel too close to the vehicle ahead? Your mirrors will need to adjust in. It makes no sense. Your view of the road will be restricted. Yes, can't see, hold back. Your sat nav will be confused. Again, no. Your engine will overheat. Definitely not. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? What should you do? Maintain your speed and course. Uh... No, it said should do, it says no. Pull over as soon as it's safe. The keyword there is safe to do so, yes. Accelerate hard to get away from it. Definitely not. Break hard. Again, when you've got break hard, the answer is going to be no for that one. Um, so yeah, pull over as it's safe to do so. Um, you're traveling on a road that has road humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? So again, look at the image, triangles are warning, says when you've road humps, it says that in there anyway. Um, overtake as soon as you can, no. Flash your headlights, no. Slow down and stay behind, that's going to be the safest option, as much as it's tempted to overtake someone in that situation. And sound your horn, no. Sound your horn and flash the headlights, it's the same meaning, warning of your presence. You are driving at night, what should you do if you're dazzled by headlights coming towards you? Dazzled means temporary blindness. So if you've been dazzled, as in you can't see anymore, you want to slow down or be prepared to stop to regain your eyesight. Pull down your sun visor, it says night time, so no. Slow down or stop, yes. Shade your eyes with your hand, no. Flash your main beam headlights, no. There's been a heavy fall of snow. What should you consider before driving in these conditions? Whether you should drive without wearing your seatbelt. You should always wear your seatbelt unless you're exempt. Whether you should wear sunglasses to reduce the glare, no. Whether your journey is essential, yeah, if it's snowing, you've got to ask yourself, is it worth driving in the snow and taking risk? Whether you should fit an amber flashing beacon to your vehicle, no. What should you do if you park on the road when it's foggy? Again, keyword there is park. Leave main beam headlights switched on, no, because you're parked. Leave parking lights switched on. Again, you're parked, parking lights, there's a link. Leave dipped headlights switched on, no, because you're parked. Leave dipped headlights and fog lights switched on, no, because you're parked. So you don't want people to think you're driving, so you turn those lights off, but leave parking lights switched on. You've broken down on a two-way road. You have a warning triangle at least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle is 45 meters. You should place a triangle for a broken down vehicle at least 45 meters away. Um, so it gives people enough time to be warned that there's an issue ahead. So we just look for 45, which is that one. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in the busy road. What's the first thing you should do? So the road is busy, warn other traffic. Um, place them in a recovery position, no. Treat the person for shock, no. Warn other traffic, yes. Place a 45, um, place your triangle 45 metres away if you have one. So you can place it from the incident. Again, it's warning them nice and early. Make sure the injured person is kept warm, 
No. At an incident, a casualty isn't breathing. What should you do while helping them to start breathing again? What should you do? Shake them firmly. No. Roll them onto their side. At an incident, a casualty isn't breathing. Which, oh, they're not breathing. What else should you do? Right, you can't roll them to the side. That's more like a recovery position. They're not breathing. Pull their arms across their chest. No. Open the airways. Yes, if they're not breathing, try to open the airways so the breathing starts again. Which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway? Double deck, double deck buses, no. Powered mobility scooters, that's the, the disabled buggies, yes. Uh, motorcycles over 50cc, no. Cars with automatic transmission, no. What do these motorway signs mean? If you don't know, these are countdown markers. It's 300 yards, 200 yards, 100 yards. Uh, the countdown markers to the next exits possible they count their markers to a bridge no they they warn of a police patrol ahead no their distance markers to the next telephone again no how should you rejoin the motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder how should you rejoin the motorway move straight out into the left hand lane as you are not allowed to drive on the hard shoulder that's a no because you're moving out from zero cars are coming down at 60 70 miles an hour that's dangerous Wait until your vehicle in the left-hand lane. Wait until a vehicle in the left-hand lane signals to you that it's safe to rejoin. It's got safe in there, but that's no. Build up speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap. Again, it's got safe in there in the traffic. This one makes more sense. So you drive in the hard shoulder, build your speed up. I would recommend do a minimum of 60 miles now because remember lorries can do only max 60 and then the gap stays the same. Um, keep your hazard lights flashing until you have safely rejoin the carriage it's got safely in there but if you keep your hazard lights so no one knows you're signaling right to rejoin the motorway so that answers no to that one you see these double white lines along the center of the road when may you park on the left so they're talking about these lines here and uh, remember you're always going up so with images you're always going up so they're talking about the broken lines that's parking restrictions to be fair so it's when you're dropping off and picking up people um, when there are no yellow lines, um, stating the obvious, during daylight hours only, no, to pick up sitting down your passengers, yep. If a line nearest to you is broken, again, if you say yes to that one, you're stating the obvious. As I said, these are parking restrictions, and that's to pick up or set down passengers. You're turning right at a crossroads, and oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning right behind the oncoming vehicle? It gives you a clear view of the road. That's offside to offside. There's two ways of turning right, near side to near side, and offside to offside gives you the best advantage because you can see clearly. You'll, you'll use less fuel because you can stay in the high gear. No, you'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. Yes, you'll have more time to turn. No, you'll be able to turn without stopping. Answers no. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? No signal on approach to the roundabout, but signal after the exit you no longer need. And they're talking about big roundabouts when they talk about this question. On a mini roundabout, you don't have the signal to come off. So they're talking about a big roundabout. Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter the new road. That's after you left, so that's too late. Signal right on approach, that answers no straight away because it says you're going straight, so you can't signal right on approach. Signal right on the approach. Again, no, because you're signaling right on the approach. That tells people you're turning right, not going straight. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. So it's this one. What's the meaning of this sign? That's the parking restriction like we just had in the country lane with the double white lines in the middle of the road. That's your parking restriction. So waiting restrictions, yes. National speed limit, no. School crossing patrol, no. No entry, no. You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclists to go? Um, cyclists can go in any direction. They would choose the safest lane for them. So it's any direction. Straight ahead, no. Left, no. Any direction, yes. And to the right, no. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? Keyword, there's a windy day. The rider may stop suddenly, no. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind, no. A rider may be blown, windy, blown in front of you, yes. 
connection. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. No. Um, what does this sign mean? So you've got a cycle and pedestrians. A route for cyclists only can't be that because it's got pedestrians as well. A route for pedestrians only can't be that because it's got a picture of cyclists. A route for pedestrians and cyclists is a possible. And no route for pedestrians and cyclists. If it was a no route, it would be a red circle because 95% of red circles are no. So it's going to be a route for pedestrians and cyclists. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? Don't let the wheelchair fool you. If anyone's at a zebra crossing, you need to slow down and be prepared to stop. Wave to the person to wait. No. Continue on your way. No. Wave to the person to cross. No. Be prepared to stop. Yes. When should you check the engine oil level? Early in the morning. Uh, it's a possible. Um, could the engine be cold then? When the engine is hot, definitely not. You check all your levels, engine oil, brake fluid, engine coolant, when the engine is cold. Every time you drive the car, you shouldn't be doing that every time you drive the car before a long journey. Um, in this situation or question, it's going to be before a long journey. You want to make sure you've got enough to get there. Um, what should you do if your vehicle pulls to one side when you use the brakes? Um, keyword there's brakes um, have the brakes checked as soon as possible yeah it means your brake pads are worn out um, unevenly um, change gear and pump the brake pedal that makes no sense increase the pressure in your tyres no use parking brake at the same time you should never use parking brake and a fork brake together at the same time what should you do when you leave your car unattended for a few minutes switch the engine off but leave the key in as much as you're switching it off, you're leaving the key in so people can still steal your car. So no. Leave the engine running. Definitely not save the environment. Lock it and remove the key. Yep. Lock it, remove the key so no one can get to it. And um, park near a traffic warden and answers no. You're having difficulty finding a parking space in a busy town. Can you park on the zigzag lines of a zebra cross? Answers no, never. Nope. Not under any circumstances. Yes. No, not unless you stay with your car. Yes, if you don't block people from crossing. Yes, in order to drop off passengers. That all knows. Under no circumstances do you park on a zigzag. When should tyre pressure be checked? Again, it should be done when it's cold. But let's see the options. Um, after travelling at high speed, no. When tyres are cold, yes. Because rubber, um, tyres are rubber. So when they get hot, they expand. They don't give a true reading. So always check. Again, like I said, all your levels, all your tyres. When the engine is cold. Um, when tyres are hot, no. After a lengthy journey. Why check it after the journey? Check it before. You're about to drive your car. What should you do if you can't find the glasses you need to wear? Find a way of getting home without driving. Yes, safest option. Borrow a friend's gla glasses and use those. Nope. Drive home at night. That's even worse. So that the lights will help you. Drive home slowly. Keep into the quiet roads again. No. Why are place names painted on the road surface? To prevent you from changing lanes? No. To restrict the flow of traffic? No. To warn of oncoming traffic? No. To help you select the correct lane in good time? That's the reason why it's painted. So you've got an advanced warning of which lane to choose. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving your car? Ask your friend if taking the medicine affected their driving. No, because if medicines affect everybody differently. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. No, check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. Yes, check the medication, see what the label says. And drink some strong coffee one hour before driving. No, especially if you're not a coffee drinker. Caffeine can do your head in. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive or ride? Your confidence will be reduced. Your confidence will increase if you drink alcohol. You get braver when you get drunk. Your reactions will be faster. Your reactions will be slower. Your awareness of danger will be improved. Definitely not. Your ability to just speed will be reduced. Yes. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car arrow should be aware of? So the main hazard, that's the red car. So you're looking for the main hazard. So there's a bus there, so the bus can move off or pedestrians may step out in front of the bus. So they can give you either option. Let's see. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver's turning right. Nope. 
The bus may move out into the road, yes. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision, no. Nope. The black car may stop suddenly again, no. So it's going to be this option. What does a sign with a brown background show? This is a tourist attraction or tourist signs. Um, all brown signs are tourist. The shape is irrelevant. As long as it's got brown on it, it's going to be a tourist sign. Minor roads, no. Primary routes, no. Tourist directions, yes. Motorway routes, no. Motorway routes will be blue. Other drivers may sometimes flash their headlights at you. What's the official meaning of this signal? They're warning you of their presence. There's a radar speed trap ahead. No, we're warning you of their presence. Yes. There's a fault with your vehicle. No, they're giving way to you. No. What must you do when you see this sign? It's got a massive word there that says stop. So what do you think you should do? Stop only if traffic is approaching. No. Stop only if a red light is showing. No. Stop even if the road is clear, yes. Stop only if children are waiting to cross. A stop sign, you have to stop your wheels from turning by law. So you've got to stop regardless. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have red and amber showing together? Take care because there's a fault with the lights. Nope. Stop because the lights are changing to red. It says red and amber together, so it's going to go green. So that's not true. Pass the lights if the road is cleared. No, because it's not a green light. Wait for the green light. Yes. What does this sign mean? Again, this is level crossing without gate or barrier. Give way to the train. And it's a tram picture. So that's a tram. So it's give way to trams. Um, wait at the barriers. No, because there is none. That's what that means. Level crossing or in this case, trams without gate or barrier. Wait at the crossroads, no. Give way to farm vehicles, no. Give way to trams. And that image gives it away. And these are the case studies. So let's look at the question first. Um, why is it dangerous to overtake near a junction? So let's look at the video. Hopefully you can see that. So the question is, why is it dangerous to overtake near a junction? Because if you overtake, this car may not be able to see. So as you can see, the bike's about to overtake. The car, the red car did not see the bike coming. So that's the reason why. So we need to look for something along those lines. So let's see what option. Let's just read the question again. Why is it dangerous to overtake near a junction? A driver waiting to emerge might not see. That's what the red car was doing. Didn't see the other bike. So it came out. Emerging means coming out. But still read the other options. You'll be in a blind spot of a driver waiting to emerge. Nope. A road surface would be slippery, no. Your signal would be hard to see, no. Um, what's the speed limit on this road for the car towing the caravan? So let's just play that video again. So there's no street lights here. The caravan's coming towards me. And it's a single carriageway. There's no crash barrier in the middle. So it's a single carriageway. So know what you can do on this road. You can do 60 as a car. But if you're towing a caravan, you drop it by 10. That becomes 50 miles an hour. So we're looking for something along those lines. So what's the speed limit on this road for the car towing the caravan is 50. Because you can do 60, drop it by 10. Question, what do the white diagonal stripe markings in the middle of the road mean? So I don't need to play the video for that because it's right here. Let me just show you. They're talking about these markings here. They're called hatch markings. And they tend to protect the traffic turning right or separate the traffic. So again, you're going up and the traffic will be coming down. So technically you're separated so that you're never going to meet. Or you can go in there if it's safe to do so or if it's necessary. So they can give you all those different options. So let's see what they gave us. Let's make sure you can see that. What do the white diagonal stripe markings in the middle of the road mean? No overtaking. No. You should not enter the area unless it's necessary and you can see it's safe. So if you're turning right, that's when you can enter it. It'd be safe to do that. And it's got safe in the answer. It's an overtaking area for motorcyclists. No, you must not enter the area unless it's an emergency. Again, no. So that's the last one, I believe. 50 out of 50th um, question. 
So let's see what we've got. Let's end test. And it's 50 out of 50. So finally, after the third attempt, I got 50 out of 50 back on track. Um, this always about improvement. So there's 50 out of 50, nothing to view there. So hopefully you got some benefit from that. So now I'm going to do a full hazard perception mock test. I'm not going to use a desktop app. I was robbed last time because it wasn't in line. And when I did contact them, they did say that could happen, but they didn't give me an alternative of how to reset it. So I'm going to use the, um, the app version, which is the driving test success app. So hopefully I can get a better score this time. My scores have been really, really low. So hopefully I can improve my score. Always about practice, making it better. So just in case you didn't know, as I always say, it's 14 videos, 13 of them have a single hazard. One of them's got a double. So you can score two fives, i.e. a 10 on that one. And all the others are singles, five. You need to average at least three across the board and you need 44 out of 75 to pass. So let's see how I get on. So again, looking ahead, reading the situation and always be scanning from left to right, right to left. So I still can't see anything coming. Can't see something in the distance. And always go for two clicks. I'm going to click again just to make sure I get a score. Remember, it's about you getting a score, not whether you see the hazard or not. So you must make sure you get into the in the five stroke three bracket. I don't see anything else going on, so there's nothing for me to click for. So again, I'm looking ahead, scanning from pavement to pavement. I don't see anything happening just yet. God, it's really hard to see. Oh, that's late. The guys walking around, it was so late. That's a zero. All right. Not a problem. Right, that's probably a zero. So I'm going to need to make sure I get some fives and fours to bring that average up. Card looking to turn. Someone's getting in their car, was getting in their car up ahead. Patrol crossing. I think that's two videos where I scored really badly. So this is not a good start. I can't believe I teach this stuff. And I'm struggling. I see nothing else going on. That's not good. So three out of four, I think I've done badly on. I need to get some fours and fives. Why right, it's telling me slow? Why? Crossroads, boom. Two. And click again just in case. Let me slow again, ask yourself, why is it saying slow? Look for the problem, if there is one. It's got to be the lights. 
It's green, so it's all good. The van to my right. Don't see anything else going on at the moment. So it must be the dust cart in the beginning, hopefully. Something's going on up there. Always just don't ask yourself what's going on. Just click when you see a problem is doing a U-turn or something. Going to click again just to make sure. That's the one that's caused me to slow down, but it could be about double. That's nice and early on the video. So remember, always keep clicking. There's another bright light up ahead. I'm going to click on that. Again, another bright light. I'm going to click on that. With lots of bright lights in the distance. Don't see nothing else going on. Right, so it's narrow streets. Cars parked up on the left. I'm gonna click. Can't see around the bend. Tight space, cars parked by side pedestrians on my right. Cars coming towards me. Again, that's the one that's caused me to slow down, so maybe that's the problem. But I'll keep going because you don't know if it's your double. That's about halfway through the video at the moment. So another one could be coming up. Another problem that is. It says stop, so I need to be stopping there. Woman can go. Oh, it's going to finish there. I'm going to pass. Woman can cross the road there. So halfway through. Mm, I think I'm struggling with it already, to be fair. So let's see if I can make the second seven set of videos more positive. The bus has got a signal. Tight space, I'm going to click again. Again, I think that's really late on my part. And keep looking ahead from pavement to pavement. Lights are green, so it's all good. Can't see much else going on. Car looking to come out to the side, I think. Traffic slowing down ahead. I don't think that was a good start to my second seven set of videos. Cars coming towards me, tight space. Slow, ask myself why is it saying slow? Because of the bend. Look into the bend, don't see nothing there. Again, car now. Always look into the bay and ask yourself, what if something's coming the other way? There's a chicane there. No cars coming towards me, so it looks good. Oh, bike now. I'm going to click again just to make sure. So that's the one that's caused me to slow down and stop. So I'm getting marked down for that.
So, they're really struggling here. Right, national speed limit. So I need to be well aware because it's going to go fast, obviously. This is national speed limit for this road. Again, it's like something's going on ahead. And I'm going to just check my mirrors again or click. Tight space, passing spot. Upside down triangle says so a give way. And start looking ahead as far as you can see. Not much is going on there. I'm gonna have to move up past the van. Again, scanning the road ahead. Car's got an indicator run. Motorbike is slowing down. Person on the side. Ooh, just three more to rescue it. 30 miles an hour speed limit. Okay. So look into the bend. There's something there in the road, I think. Let's click again. I think I need to go to spec savers because I'm struggling to see her to be honest. Um, those horses I saw really late again. Some was on the pavement, so it's all good. I think I need to have a word with my optician. Again, scanning from hedge to pavement, hedge to pavement. Don't see much going on. Telling me slow on the floor, ask yourself why is it saying slow? What's the problem? All right, enough going on there. Two more cars coming out to my right. The cars reverse off the driveway. I don't think I've had my double yet. This is early, so this could be my double. So I need a seven or an eight to bring that score right up because I think I've done so bad, it's unreal. Car's coming up the side road. Looking well ahead of the, the car in front of me. Don't see our problems yet other than the bend. But everything's all good. Again, slow, ask myself why. A little chicane. Last one. Is the last one 13 or 14? No, not the last one. I've got two to go. Um, something's in the road up ahead. I'm going to click on that again just to make sure. I kind of need to get scores on this. Um, I'll just double check on that one. Right. Again, watching the road ahead. Cars are parked up on the left. Is that a cyclist? It says slow. Again, ask myself why is it saying slow? 
metre from the curb, I can't be a metre, the cars are parked up. Again, car door. That could be my double, to be honest. There's two obvious ones there. Last one. Again, watching the road ahead, faster road says slow on the floor. Ask yourself why is it saying because of the bridge. There's a car there. Oh, that could be late as well. Looks like something's in the road up there as well. The joggers, I'm going to click again because I'm a little bit closer. Hmm. Could be a zero. I'm on the wrong side of the road there, so let me click again. Again, looking into the bend. I can't see around the bend, so you want to be thinking, what if there's something around there? So with real driving lessons, you always slow down. Wow, 55 out of 75. That's, I think that's the best score I've had so far, but still struggling with hazard perception. Um, but yeah, let's review. On here, it's given me his last score, five, five, and a nine on my double, which I'm happy with. So, so it's a better score on my hazard perception, but I'm going to keep going until I get in the 60s, because that's where I think I should be. But it's always about practice, 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 and practice makes you better. But as long as you're getting more than 44, which is the pass mark, you should be okay. You remember on the real test, you've got a bigger screen um, and the videos are all crystal clear, as in CGI's, and they're slightly slower than the app compared to the feedback that we get from our students when they go live in the test itself. So hopefully you got some value from that. You guys seem to be enjoying the full mock test. I will keep making them as long as you keep asking for it. So make sure you like, comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel to help it grow so other people can see the videos as well and help them to pass their theory test. YouTube's gonna show your video here. I'm gonna show your video here. Go off and watch which video is relevant to you and I shall catch you in that video.